Okay, so I'm going to be going over this practice assessment. It's all on, on uh, rational numbers and expressions. I'm probably going to move a little bit quickly because there are 30 problems, but I also will uh, do my best to make sure that I explain everything that's in a way that's going to be most helpful to you. Okay, so my first two for one and two, okay, I'm going to be following my rules for multiplication and division. And I know when I've got either two negatives or two positives, because they're happy when they are the same, because if I can complain with my friend and I like to complain, that makes me happy. And if I like to be happy and my friend likes to be happy, everybody's happy. So that means that those are both positives. When they are different, where I've got a negative and a positive, well, people are sad if I'm negative all the time and I'm around a really positive, annoying person, or if I'm a positive person and I'm around somebody who's negative all the time, nobody's happy like that. So that's basically the rule. So I know I multiply seven times eight, which of course is 56. And I've got a positive and a negative, so therefore my answer is negative. Next one, I've got 18 divided by three is six. I've got two positives. Or two negatives, which therefore makes that a positive. Okay, next, I'm just going to follow my rules for multiplying fractions. So we remember our math Macarena. And I'm going to keep the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. So 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 5 is 20. I say to myself, is there a gazinta that 6 and 20 share? And of course there is. The gazinta they both share is 2. I can divide top and bottom by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. 20 divided by 2 is 10. And then I can't forget about the fact that way back here in the beginning, I had one negative and one positive. So because they're different, they're unhappy, they are sad. So therefore, it is negative. Okay, moving right along. <clears throat> Ahmad had a balance of $46 in his checking account. So a balance, that's how much money he has in there. So that's a positive number. Um, he made a deposit of $56. So a deposit means that he's putting money in there. So that means the amount of money in his checking account goes up, making it therefore a positive number. Then he wrote checks for $17 and $30. So when I write a check, I know that that money comes out of my checking account. So that would be a negative 17 and a negative 30. And then the bank charged him a service fee. A service fee means that they're taking money out. So that would also be a negative. And in that case, it's a negative three. Now, you'll probably notice that I just wrote these numbers in order because I, I did look ahead to see that they're asking me how much money does he have in his account after all of this happens. So I know that that means I'm simply going to be adding all of these numbers together. Now, the nice thing here is that I don't have to rearrange them. Um, remember, when I'm adding, I can add in any order. This does not work if there's any subtraction. But once I put in positive and negative numbers, I can just add, and that makes my life a whole lot easier. So... I, since I can add in any order, I'm going to add my positives, and then I'm going to add all my negatives, and then I'm going to find the difference of the two, because when I, the signs are different, I find the difference. So, 46 plus 56. Well, I know that 40 plus 50 is 90, and 6 plus 6 is 12, so 90 plus 12 is 102. So I've got positive one over two, 102 over here. Now I've got negative 17 and negative 30. The signs are the same, find the sum. So negative 17 and negative 30, that's an easy one. I know that that's 47. They keep their sign as negative. Be very careful here that we don't mix up the rules of multiplication and division with addition and subtraction. That's why I've explained to you a number of times how very important it is that you have your note cards so that you can separate the rules out. Okay, so I've got negative 47 plus negative three. Signs are the same, find the sum. Again, here we are. So 47 plus three, of course, is 50. The signs are the same, negative 50. So now I'm going to take these two numbers 
and I'm going to add them together. So I've got positive 102 plus negative 50. Remember we put those parentheses in there just as separators so it doesn't say plus minus. I didn't do that in the beginning um, when I had all of them because I really did spread them out so I didn't have to as much. But here when they're together, I'm going to make a point of doing that. So 102, positive 102 plus negative 50. <clears throat> well here, don't forget those signs are different. So therefore I find the difference. Signs are different, find the difference. So I'm going to say to myself, 102 minus 50. Well, I know that that's 52, right? And then my job is to figure out, is that 52 positive or negative? Well, I look at both of these numbers and I say to them, which one is further away from zero? Is 102 further away from zero or is negative 50 further away from zero? Well, hopefully, I mean, there's a rather big difference between these two numbers. So hopefully you know that the answer to that question is this. So therefore, your answer is positive 52. And then when we look up top, we'll look at that. And there it is. There's our answer. Next, consider these multiplication and division sentences. In the first column, evaluate the expression and mark whether the result is positive or negative. Well, I'm going to tell you right now that the rules that we just talked about for each of these, all we've got going on here is multiplication and division, right? So it's the same exact thing as we had in the beginning for multiplying and dividing. When I multiply and divide, if I've got a positive and a positive or a negative and a negative, my answer will always be positive. If I've got a positive and a negative or a negative and a positive, it truly doesn't matter which way the order is, um, that's going to give me a negative. So negative 7 times negative 3, a negative and a negative is a positive. So positive. Uh, positive 16 times negative 11, positive and negative, that's negative. Um, negative 27 divided by negative 9, both negative, therefore that's positive. And negative 42 divided by 21, those signs are different, so therefore it's negative. On Monday, the temperature at 10 a.m. at Sam's house was negative 6 degrees. The temperature at 2 p.m. was 2 degrees. Now, this, of course, says to select from a drop-down menu, which clearly we don't have when I'm doing it here, but we can simply fill in those blanks. It's not that big of a deal here. Um, so we want the drop-down menu to complete, correctly complete the statement. So from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., so we're analyzing what happens from 10 a.m. So at 10 a.m., the temperature is negative 6, and then at 2 p.m., the uh, temperature is 2 degrees. So the first thing we want to look at is from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., the temperature at Sam's house, did it increase or decrease? Well, let's go ahead and put this on a number line. If I put negative 6 here, here's 0, and here's 2, okay? So if I go from negative 6, which is right here, right, and I go over to 2, positive 2, I know that when I move to the right, that I'm moving in a positive direction. So therefore, it increased, okay? So I need to write in here, um, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., it increased. And then, of course, we want to figure out by how much. It increased by how many degrees? Well, if I simply look at this, I know, well, from 6 to 0, this absolute value, or the distance is 6, and then from 0 to 2, it's another 2. So I would add those, right? And the distance between the two, of course, is 8 degrees Fahrenheit. Next. A U.S. Navy diver in a specialized suit is swimming at a height of negative 1,245 feet relative to sea level. A height of negative. Okay, so, and it says relative to sea level. So you should recall that at sea level, that is where zero feet is, okay? So if the height is negative, that means it's gonna be down under sea level, and in this case, it goes to negative 1,245, okay? So that should clear up any kind of weird, you know, the height of its negative number. Well, that means it's headed down. Okay, how many feet should he travel to get back to sea level? Okay, so if he's down here, how does he get back up to sea level? Well, he goes all the way up like this, right? So what is the distance from here 
to here. Well, it's the same distance as it was to get down, so we know that this distance is 1,245 feet. So now it says that I can check all that apply. So A says negative. Well, it doesn't ask anything about a direction. It just says how many feet. So we're talking about the distance from one place to another. We want that to be positive. Ooh, <laughs> dropped my pen. Okay, so um, we're just looking at the distance. So we, don't, we know that the number can't be negative in this particular answer, okay? Next, 1,245 1, feet. Well, there it is. That is, in fact, the answer that we were talking about. But I need to be careful because this says check all that apply. So whenever it says that, I need to make sure that I haven't missed anything. So this next one, I've got the absolute value of negative 1,245. You might recall that the absolute value means the distance from zero. And as we just talked about, a distance itself is not negative. The distance itself is not negative. The negative or positive tells us which direction it's going in. So this will always be positive. So since it's always going to be positive, well, I know that that's what I want. I want it to be positive. So therefore, C works. And oh my goodness, D, absolute value of 1,245. It's already positive, but it still doesn't matter. So in this particular, um, for this particular answer, we can actually have three correct choices. So be careful. Whenever it says check all that apply, make sure you actually do. Next, the integer that makes the following division sentence true. Okay, so whenever we're looking at this, I'd like to put a, a variable in here. X divided by negative 2 equals negative 3. And furthermore, I actually would like to rewrite it so it says X divided by negative 2 equals negative 3. So then, of course, I say to myself, I want to get x by itself. So I ask the question, same question every single time, and that question is, what is the opposite? What's the opposite? Well, I know that the opposite of divide by negative 2 is multiply by negative 2. So I'm going to multiply by negative 2 on both sides, because the only way to keep it balanced is if I do the same thing on both sides. So negative 2 over 1, because I'm multiplying, and because this is in a fraction per se, I want my other one to be as well. So what happens with these two? Look at that, they cancel out. <gasps> Yay! So now that they've canceled, the whole reason I did this is because I wanted that x by itself. And now I've got this integer problem here. I've got negative 3 times negative 2. Well, I know that negative 3, or excuse me, 3 times 2 is 6. I've got two negatives. That makes it a positive. So the answer over here is positive 6. Next, if a equals 3 halves and b equals negative 2 thirds, what is the which of the following statements hold true? Select all that apply. Make sure we're paying attention to that. Select all that apply, right? Okay. So, First thing I want to look at is I want to analyze these numbers just a little bit before I start to do anything else. So I've got A is 3 halves. So it's positive. So first of all, 3 halves I know is the same as 1 and 1 half. That may be helpful later on when I try and think of it. Think about it, okay? Um, and the other thing is that it is positive, okay? And then B is negative two-thirds. I can't do anything to two-thirds because it's already simplified um, as it is. And the other thing I want you to think about here before we really move on, I'm going to actually come on down here, okay, so you can see this. I, I, if I put these on a number line, I've got, if here's my negative one, and here's positive one, and here's zero in the middle, I know that 1 and 1 half, my positive 1 and 1 half, is going to be probably about here. So that's one, positive 1 and 1 half, or 3 thirds, or <laughs> 3 halves, right? And then my negative 2 thirds is going to be somewhere about here. Okay, so that's negative 2 thirds. 
Now, that information is going to come in handy in just a little bit. So uh, we always want to take make sure we understand the numbers that we're dealing with before we try to answer these questions. So um, a, a, I have like addition, multiplication, subtraction, and, and division. So I know, and we've talked about this now a couple times just in these, these problem set here, that when I multiply and divide, it depends if the uh, signs are the same or different. So I know right now, if I multiply these two numbers, then I'm going to be multiplying or dividing a negative and a positive. Whenever I do that, my answer is always negative. Okay, so is negative a negative? So over here, I've got this is below zero. Well, my negative is in fact below zero, right? So if I know both of these are gonna be negative, then this below zero here for D is correct, and also for B, correct, okay? Now, I still need to analyze A and C. So let's take a look at those. A, I'm adding them together. I'm adding them together. So I would have three halves plus negative two-thirds, right? And I want you to look at them here. If I um, look at this, I've got negative two-thirds. Here's my distance from here to here. And then if I've got one and one-half, that would be the distance from here to here. So hopefully you can see which distance is further, okay? The larger distance should very clearly be this one here, right? So the signs are different. Find the difference, right? So I'm finding the difference of these two. I don't really need to do that math right now because all I need to know is which one of these is further away from zero. Well, we already heard, saw this right here, so I know, whoops, I know that three halves is further away from zero, and that is on the positive side, so I know that my answer is going to be positive. Is positive less than zero? Hmm, no, it is not, so therefore A does not work. Now, what about C? Well, let's look at this. I have A is my positive number, so that would be 3 halves minus my negative number. Well, again, I don't actually have to finish, go, go all the way through and do this math. I just do the cha-cha-cha, woo-hoo, cha-cha-cha, and I know that the cha-cha-cha tells me that... I stay, I'm gonna move it over to here, stay, change, change this to a positive. So now I'm just adding together two positives. I'm adding a positive and a positive. So my answer is obviously it's still gonna be positive. Brings me to this right here. Well, my positive is not less than zero, so this one also doesn't work. So just let me bring in the highlighter here so it's very clear that B and D are their correct answers. I know there's a lot of mess here, but if you followed along or slow it down and go back, or of course, ask me questions, it should all be very clear. And so the opposite of each number in the table, well, this one is easy. The opposite just means it's in the opposite number on the number line. So seven right now is on the positive side. Whoopsie. And I want it to now be on the negative side. So the opposite of seven is negative seven. Going right along that same theme, negative 55. I'm going to go in the opposite direction on the number line, so that gives me positive 55. Next one, negative 90, gives me positive 90. The opposite of one is negative one, and the opposite of 19 is negative 19. How many five and six, five sixteenths feet, foot pieces of wood can you cut from a board that is one and nine sixteenths feet long? Oh my gosh, this is so difficult. I don't know what to do. So whenever I, I see these kind of numbers that I'm like, ooh, yeah, that, that kind of hurts my head to try and just think about it. I, I kind of like, I think about different numbers, simpler numbers. So if I knew that, that this was 10 feet long, this one I'm thinking in my head, this is not 10 feet long. So, and I want to know how I would get two feet, two foot pieces, two feet pieces, out of that 10 foot, what would I do? Well, that's easy, right? I would do 10 divided by two. Now we are not doing 10 divided by two. Please do not confuse what I'm doing. I am doing that, remember, to um, make things 
easier for me to figure out what operation to use and in what order. So I, right now, I've got 10 divided by two. So my 10 was representing this one and nine sixteenths. So that means I'm gonna be doing one and nine sixteenths divided by, and remember our two was really representing this over here. So that number is not actually two. That makes no sense. I can't just change numbers. It's actually divided by five and five, or five sixteenths, okay? So remember, the 10 and the two were there to simplify it to a lot. One of our strategies in math is to make something into an easier problem, and that's what I did. I didn't solve that problem. I just made those numbers easier for me to deal with. So I know that I'm dividing here. I cannot divide using this mixed number, so I need to know, I need to go like right around here. 16 times one, of course, is 16. And then one, or excuse me, <laughs> 16 plus nine, 16 plus 10 would be 26, but it's plus nine, so it's 25. I keep my 16 divided by 5 sixteenths is already in a format that I can use. So now a math macarena, woohoo, math macarena. So keep the first, flip the second, now we multiply. Keep the top of the top, bottom of the bottom, woo, put on the brakes. Let's take a look at this for just a quick moment here. I should notice, or you should notice, I should say, that these two numbers, 16 and 16, are the same. If I have two numbers across, across the way, like diagonally like that, these two can cancel each other out. Now, you may notice that I can also do something with the 25 and 5 because they share a gazinta. But even if I don't mention notice that, that's all right. Because what I can do is I know that both of these have canceled out, so therefore... This becomes a one and this becomes a one. So then when I keep the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom, I get 25 times one over one times five, giving me 25 over five. And if I reduce that, lastly, I reduce because that tiny little five can't hold up that big giant 25. I say to myself, how many times does five go into 25? Well, it goes in there five times. So I know that this is equal to five, and looky here, five pieces of wood is my choice C. Way to go, woohoo! Determine the value of the expression given below. So this problem in front of us really is not very different from the last one that we just did, um, but it's you know still asking us to solve this problem, so I know it's gonna be 121 over two, that's already in its um, fraction form, you know, there's not a mixed number, it's a, it's a fraction divided by, so I need to change this, eight times one is eight, remember I multiply, and then I add, eight plus three is 11, the denominator or the number on the bottom stays the same. So I've got 121 over two divided by 11 over eight. Math Macarena time. First I will divide, keep the first, flip the second, then we multiply, keep the top, Putting on the brakes again, people. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, Mrs. De Silva, none of those neighbor, none, none of those numbers are the same. What are you looking at? Well, hopefully you did one of two things. You either noticed that the two and the eight. Oh, I didn't want to do it like that. Wait a second. I wanted to use my highlighter. The two and the eight share a gazinta, and the. 121 and the 11 share a gazinta. You can do one or both of these at this point, okay? You also can do none of these. You can multiply 121 times eight and two times 11, and then look for the gazintas, and you will still get a correct number if you do all of your computations correct. However, at this point, let's just get, make our lives a whole lot easier. So let's start with two and eight. What's the gazinta that two and eight share? What goes into two and goes into eight? Well, that's easy. It's two. Two divided by two and eight divided by two. Goes into, two goes into, two goes into, both of them. So two divided by two leaves me with one. And eight divided by two gives me four. 
okay? So again, I can move on here or I can keep on going because hopefully you know all your square numbers and you know that 11 times 11 is 121. And as soon as you know that, that the gazinta that they share is 11. You can divide both of these by 11. 11 divided by 11, of course, is 1. 121 divided by 11, we just said, is 1 as well. So when I rewrite these, well, this is going to look all sorts of strange, but it's okay because it is correct. I need to pay attention, make sure I pull all the correct numbers down. I've got 1 over 1 times 4 over 1, right? So um, once I know that I have 4 over 1, Wait a second, wait a second. I knew I did something wrong when I looked at it. I knew that wasn't right. Nobody stopped me. Oh wait, there's nobody here to stop me. We're not in class. That confuses me sometimes. 121 divided by 11 is 11, not one. Hopefully some of you are scratching your head and saying, Mrs. De Silva, you've got crazy things going on over there. So let's now fix that. So this now is no longer one over one, but 11 over one times four over one. Well, that makes a whole lot more sense. Remember that always comes with checking our work. So. I kept the first, flipped the second, now I multiply, now I keep the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. So 11 times 4, of course, is 44. 1 times 1 is 1. That tiny little 1 can't hold up that 44, but you should know anyway that anything over 1 is equal to itself. So the answer here is 44. Woohoo! Very exciting. What is the value of negative 36 over 5? times the quantity of 10 ninths minus 5 6. Wow, we've got a lot of choices here. We can use the distributive property, woo, woo, and send it over the top, or we can do what's on the inside of the parentheses first, because if we follow the order of operations, that's what we would do. So personally, when I look at those numbers, I know that it can go either way, but I am going to uh, choose the doing inside the parentheses first. So I am going to do 10 ninths minus 5 6 first. I did bring the whole thing down um, just so I don't lose track of it. But for now, I'm, I'm just going to ignore the negative 36 over 5. Shh, don't tell him I'm ignoring him. It's only for a short time. So let's come over here. We know that we now get to use that wonderful acronym of I, whoopsie, I hate when I do that, but it's okay. I love eating apples and avocados yummy somebody told me today they don't like avocados but you can put another a in there if you'd like it is completely up to you i love eating animal crackers and apples whatever you would like so i have set up my graphic organizer and i know that i've got these two here i've got 10 over 9 minus 5 over 6. So that's my I, my improper fractions. That's already done. I love that. Okay, so next, I've got my L. I'm finding the least common multiple in this case of 9 and 6. So in other words, the smallest number that both 9 and 6 go into. What are 9 and 6 both gazintas of? Well, the smallest number, the first one we get to is 18. 9 times 2 is 18. 6 times 3 is 18. So the LCM they share, of course, is 18. So now I'm going to be changing both of my original fractions to new equivalent fractions. Fractions, equivalent fractions. So that means both of these have to be over 18. So I'm going to have some number over 18 minus some other number over 18. And my job right now is to figure out what those numbers are. So I say to myself, how do I best get from 9 to 18. So in other words, 9 times what equals 18? Well, hopefully you know that that's 2. 9 times 2 is 18. So I did that to the bottom. I need to do it to the top. There's my 10. I'm going to have 10 times 2 equals 20. So that's what I've got on top of that one there. Now, I've got another one. I have to say to myself, how do I get from 6 to 18? So 6 times what equals 18? Of course it's three so now i look at the top number here right there so i'm going to do five times three and i know that that's 15. so now the next thing that i'm going to do 
I've gotten through I, L, and E. I'm up to my A. So the next thing is that I'm going to add or subtract. It's one or the other. In this particular case, we are subtracting, right? So my acronym gives me the A, but I know that adding and subtracting naturally go together. So in order to do this, I am going to completely ignore the bottom numbers and only look at the top numbers so that I can properly do this operation. So I know that I've got 20 minus 15. Well, what is 20 minus 15? I know you all know this. 20 minus 15 is in fact five. So now I've got everything that I need to write my final answer. And that of course is my final A is the answer. And what I do for that is I take the five that I found here, that's going to become the numerator, the number on top. And for the bottom number, well, that's my LCM, which I find right here, or you can find it down here. It truly does not matter because it should be the same. So my final answer is five eighteenths. Now, again, er, hold on the brakes, right? Because what? I'm not done, Mrs. De Silva. We still have this guy to deal with. Told you not to forget. So I'm gonna bring this over here. And I've got negative 36 over five. Never negative 36 fifths. That is icky. Let me fix that. There we go. Negative 36 over five times, when I've got a number next to parentheses, it means I multiply, times five over 18. I'm multiplying fractions, keep the top or the top or the bottom with the bottom. Whoa, wait a minute, what do we see? We should see that these numbers are the same. When I've got two of the same numbers in a diagonal from each other, it means that they cancel each other out. So I'm left with a one here and a one here. Keep the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. So again, you can have two choices here. You can figure out to 36 and 18 share a gazinta or carry on. In this case, I could do it either way, but I am going to carry on. So I'm going to have the top with the top, negative 36 times one over one times 18. Well, you know what? I am going to be looking at those two numbers and seeing if they share a gazinta anyway. So in this particular case, it didn't really matter which one I did first. So I've got negative 36 over 18. That tiny little 18 can't carry around that big giant 36. So what are we gonna do about it? Well, hopefully that you know, or if not, you phoned a friend or you used your calculator and said, how many times does 18 go into 36? And hopefully you figured out that it goes in there two times. That's twice, that equals two. And I can't forget that there's a negative there. I can't forget the negative because you will get it wrong. So my final answer is negative two. Next. In a board game, players lose, lose 50 points. When I lose points, that means it's negative, negative 50, every time they land on a red space. Okay, that's a weird game, but that's fine. There's no other way to lose points. Jamie has a score of negative 450. What is the minimum number? So that's the smallest number, the smallest number of times that Jamie landed on a red space. Okay, so I can only lose 50 every time, and Jamie is down to negative 450. So if I just pretended that that was negative 5 and this was negative 45, maybe that would help you think about it. Maybe not. Either way, you should know that the operation you're doing here is division. You're going to divide negative 450 by negative 50. Why both negatives? Well, here I'm losing points, and here's the total points. So a negative divided by a negative, what happens there? They become a positive. And then I do 450 divided by 50, and hopefully you know that that's nine. So the minimum, or the smallest number of times that um, Jamie could have landed on a red square is nine times. Now you might be thinking to yourself, but why nine? That's weird. Why the smallest? Of course, Jamie landed on it nine times. Well, not necessarily, because think about it. If in my, now this is an aside, this is your correct answer. But just so that you truly understand here, to get to negative 450, what if in the first, the first round, Jamie got 50 points, gained 50 points? 
Well, now to get all the way down to negative 450, it's a further distance than nine. So that's why they ask the minimum or the smallest number. So just to understand what that, that says, um, semantics, the, the words that they're being used, um, now you do. Next problem. Ron made two thirds of a quart of hot chocolate. Each mug holds one third of a quart. How many mugs will Ron be able to fill? Okay, so Ron made two thirds of a quart of hot chocolate. So that's much. Ron has a total of two thirds of a quart. Okay. The mug, each mug holds one third. So one mug equals one third of a quart. How many mugs will Ron be able to fill? Hmm. Well, I'm dividing here. I've got a total of two thirds divided by one third. Now we've got a couple of choices here, folks. We can go through all the math, keep the first, flip the second, then we multiply, or we can just stop for a moment and think about this. I have got two thirds and each mug holds one third. Well, how many mugs is that? One third plus another one third is two thirds. And well, that's all I have. So logic tells me without having to do all sorts of fancy math that the answer is two mugs. Next, the product of this expression. The product, that means I'm multiplying and I can see that by the sign. So I have to work it out here. So negative three times three. Negative three times three, a negative times a positive is a negative, and three times three is nine. Okay, now multiplication like addition, I can do multiplication in any order and it won't make a difference <laughs> in any order. So, because think about it, if I had two times three or three times two, both are gonna give me the same exact answer, right? So that's what we mean, we can do them in any order. Why do we care about that right now, Mrs. De Silva? They're all threes. Well, the reason we care about that is because I can not go from the next nine times three, but do the other negative three times negative three. A negative times a negative, of course, is a positive. Three times three is nine. Well, all of a sudden, I have a problem that I think is easier probably for most of us. We've got negative nine times positive nine. Nine times nine is 81. A negative times a positive is negative. My answer is right here, negative 81. Aren't you careful? Aren't you glad that we should be very careful here about our signs? Because usually in most assessments, you're gonna see both numbers there, one positive and one negative, because they like to do that to us. Next, we're gonna simplify this. We can go woo, woo, because it's a distributive property, or we can just say, you know what? These are all numbers. I am going to instead just use my order of operations. So that means I do this stuff on the inside of the parentheses first. Negative six plus two. Negative six plus two. Signs are different, find the difference, right? So that means I do six minus two, right? Six minus two is four. Which one's further away from zero? Negative six, negative six all the way down here or two up here. Which one's further away from zero? Hopefully you can see that it is negative six is further away. So that means my four is going to be negative. Whoopsie, do that all the time. Negative four, bring down the rest of this problem. I've got two times negative four divided by four. This is interesting. I wonder what's gonna happen here. Oh, well, let's keep going. I divide by four, multiply by four, and then divide by four. I really shouldn't do anything, but I've got a negative here. Negative and a positive. Well, two times negative four. Two times four is eight. A positive times a negative is a negative. So now I've got negative eight. Bring down the rest, divided by four. Eight divided by four is two. Negative times a positive is still a negative. My answer is negative two. simplify this. Oh, yes, we get to do the math. Not, not excuse me, we get to do some wooing for the distributed property. So here we go. You ready? Don't excessively woo. We don't want anybody getting injured while they're doing their math. So woo, woo. That's fun, isn't it? 
So everybody gets a two, a two for you and a two for you. So that means two times five plus, you gotta be careful, sometimes that plus is a minus, so make sure you pay attention, plus two times three X. Two times five is 10 plus two times three X. Think about it, I've got two sets of three chairs. How many chairs do I have? I have six chairs. So 10 plus 6x. This number here, there's no number here on the outside. Remember, whenever there isn't a number, it's a ninja one. We just can't see it. But I'm going to just take a, the, that expression out of the parentheses because it doesn't need to be in there anymore and say plus x plus 10. So now I'm to the point where I like to box and underline to sort things out here because otherwise, that way I won't get confused. So I have a number with no variable. I'm going to underline it plus 6x, that certainly has a variable, so I'm gonna box it in, plus x, another variable, gonna box it in, plus 10. Please take note, I am including the operation in the front because it tells us what to do. So I'm going to sort them so that, that my boxes are together and my underlines are together. So I've got 6x plus x inside box, and then I've got 10 plus 10. This is De Silva, what? There, there's nothing here. How can we have that? Well, it's simple. This number is positive, so that's just a plus. Plus and positive, same thing. Minus and negative, same thing. 6x plus x. 6x's six plus 1x. Remember, here's that ninja 1. It's in there. A 6x's plus another x. Well, that, of course, is 7x plus 10 plus 10. 10 plus 10 is 20. So that is going to give me plus 20. This is De Silva. This is making me very uncomfortable. How can it end that way? These are not the same. We cannot put them together. If I had seven chairs and 20 tables, I would never actually have 27 tables or 27 chairs. Even if I sit on the tables, they're still tables. So this has to remain as 7x plus 20 because they are not the same. Not the same can't combine okay that's the biggest mistake people make here so be careful don't do it next 19 i'm going to simplify 7 times the quantity of n plus 2 oh we get to woo everybody ready woo woo oh, that was so fun remember no excessive wooing we don't want anybody getting hurt so I'm going to bring this all the way down here. I brought that 7 into everybody. Everybody gets a 7. 7 times n plus 7 times 2. 7 times n is 7n plus 7 times 2 is 14. 7n plus 14. Can I put them together? No! They are not the same. I can't combine them. So there is my answer. 7n plus 14. Do I see one that says that? <gasps> yes, I do, and here it is. This is your answer. Simplify the, simplify the expression and combine like terms. Ah, this is so fun. I'm so glad we get to do some more of this. Here we go. <gasps> Woo, uh-oh, that's a, no, wait, wait. I need an actual, no more highlighter. There we go. Oh, see, we almost accidentally wooed, and, you know, people can get hurt doing that. So, here we go. Two, woo! Woo! So that means everybody gets a 2. 2 times x plus 2 times 6. 2 times x and 2 times 6. So 2 times x is 2x plus, I brought down that plus, it's very important. 2 times 6 is 12. Pay attention, sometimes that's a, a minus and not a plus. I'm going to bring down the rest of this problem now. So I've got plus 3x plus Four. Okay, so um, now I'm going to box and underline. That's my next fun step. So I've got 2x, that is a variable. I'm going to put it in a box. Plus 12, that does not have a variable. Underline plus 3x, that is a variable. Going to box plus 4 is an underline. I sort them out and I keep everything that's in a box together in a box. And everything that is not in a box is underlined, so I'm going to keep all of that together. That's how I sort. 
So now I've got 2x plus 3x. If I've got 2x's and I add 3 more x's to it, that of course is 5x plus 12 plus 4 is 16. I am done. I cannot combine them. That is finished. 5x plus 16. Way to go, team. Next. Write an equivalent expression for each of the following. Okay, x plus x plus x plus 2x plus x. Okay, let's slow down here for a minute. X plus X, well that's, if I think about chair plus chair, that would be two chairs, so this is two X plus X, that's three X, two X plus X, that's also three X, three X plus three X, that is six X. Two, uh, that, or excuse me, X plus two plus X plus two. We just talked about this. We can't put things together that are not the same. So I've got x plus x, x plus x, well that's 2x, that's a 2, 2x, plus 2 plus 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. So this is going to be 2x plus 4. Oh my goodness, all of this, y plus y plus y plus y plus y. Well how many y's is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is 5 y's, plus 10 plus 1, plus 10 plus 1, that's 11. So 5 y plus 11 is my answer, 5 y plus 11. That is an 11, that is a funny looking 11, let me fix that, 5 y plus 11. Of course, if you're listening as I talk, it will be fine because you'll get the right answers, even if my handwriting is messy sometimes. Simplify the expression, 10h minus 4h. If I've got 10 h's and I take away 4 h's, well, that leaves me with 6 h's. Mr. Silva, it was too easy. What do I else? No, it's done. Don't worry about it. It is done. Here, come on. Oh, that was so sad. Simplify. Yeah, woo-hoo. I get to do some more wooing. Wooing is so fun. Woo, woo. So everybody gets three. Everybody gets three. One plus, I'm keeping that. And then I've got three times four N, when I sent that in there, plus three times six. Okay, remember I just brought this over. I'm not doing anything with it yet. Three times four N. So Stop and Shop has muffins that come in packages of four. So if I bought three packages of four muffins, that of course would be 12. So three times four N is 12 muffins. Really it's 12 N. Muffins would be way better, but that is not what we have. Plus three times six. Three times six is 18. Bring down my one plus. I'm gonna box an underline. I've got an underline. I've got a box. I've got an underline. Once I rearrange, I know that my 12 N doesn't have anything being done to it. It's in a box. There it is, my 12 N plus one plus 18, one plus 18 is of course 19. Bring down my 12 N, my answer is 12 N plus 19. Confidence, next, oh wait, did I six? <gasps> Solve for X, oh I love these. I get to ask that ever famous question, what's the opposite? What's the opposite? Well, I'm going to just rewrite this over here so it's a little easier for me. X divided by 8 equals 8. X divided by 8 equals 8. What's the opposite of divided by 8? Well, the opposite of divided by 8 is to multiply times 8. See, careful. Some of you already thought you knew the answer, but you weren't paying attention. I know who you are. I can see you. Put that over 1. These 8s are going to cancel. I'm left with X equals, what's 8 times 8? It is 64. That's what goes in here. X equals 64. Oh, we're on in. We're almost done. <gasps> Match the following phrases with their algebraic expression. 10 is increased by X. 10 is increased. Increased means I add. 10 is increased by X. 10 plus X. Is that here? <gasps> Look, here it is. 10 plus X. Yay. Okay, what's next? The product, 
product means I multiply of 10 and a number x, 10 times x. Ew, why did they do that? That's gross. Mrs. De Silva says we can't do that because they wrote that x like really fancy and that's why we can tell the difference. But usually we write it like this, 10 times x because when we write it, it doesn't look that fancy. But really the accepted way to write that, as you should know, is 10x. So I think we already answered our question. We know that it's 10 times x. Mrs. DeSilva got all freaked out by the fact that it was written like that. But we know that this is right here. Now, do we simply put a check mark here and assume that it's correct? Let's make sure 10 is divided by a number x. Well, really, let's be honest, Mrs. De Silva tells us to write it like this, 10 divided by x. But we know that it can be written either way, and that's how they write it here. So we could have just checked it off, but is that the safe way to do it? It is not. Combine like terms to make a simplified expression. Simplified, some of you contacted me, simplified. Mrs. De Silva, what does that mean? That is just a fancy math way of saying solve it. Math people like to do that. They might like to make things sound really complicated so that the common person can't understand what's going on. But now you know the secrets. Do not tell all the secrets because, well, terrible things could happen if you give away all the math secrets. Or maybe not. Combine like terms to make a simplified expression. Okay, so this says negative 2w minus 5w. Oh, I'm, what's the negatives? I can hear some of you whining. Stop that right now. We're going to do our cha-cha-cha like we love to do. We're going to stay. We're going to change. We're going to cha-cha-cha. Stay, change, change, cha-cha-cha. Sorry. I forgot the other change, even though I was doing it. So now I've got negative 2w plus negative 5w. Oh, look at this. The signs are the same. Find the sum. So now I've got 2w plus 5 more w's. Well, that's 7w's. Both of them are negative, so it's negative 7w. Negative 7w. That's its most simplified form. I do not know what w is, so it stays like that. Simplify this expression. a plus 2a plus 7a. a plus 2a plus 7a. Well, if I've got an A, don't forget we've got the ninja one there. Ninja one. <gasps> there it is. One A. Wait, you can't see it. It's gone. Wait, it's back. Wait, it's gone. Look, it's back. Wait, it's gone. Look, it's back. It's always there. You just can't always see it. It's a ninja. Ninja one. So, one A plus two A, or just plain old A plus two A. If I've got a chair plus two more chairs, that of course is three chairs, or three A plus seven A. 3a's plus 7 more a's is, of course, 10a. There's my answer, 10. Ew, that is icky to look at. 10a. There we go. Almost to the end. Almost there. <sighs> simplify. What does simplify mean? It means to solve it. Yes, it does. Fancy math words. That's what they do. So I go, woo, woo. That is so fun. Everybody gets a 5. 5 times x minus, oh, be careful of that, it's not a plus, minus 5 times 4. 5 times x is, of course, 5x, minus 5 times 4 is 20. Ms. De Silva, I have to do something to it. It just doesn't look right. Oh, yes, it does. It is perfect. That is the answer. Which one of these? Do I have a 5x minus 20? Yes, I do. There it is. Next. Write the phrase 9 increased by a number x as an algebraic expression. I can do this in just one shot. 9 increased means I add by a number x. 9 plus x, ta-da! Next, indicate, that means tell us, whether each expression in the table is equivalent to, whoa, I'm dropping things, is equivalent to 1 half of x minus 1, x minus 1 half, or not equivalent to either of them. And I don't know why this got cut off when I, when I brought it over here, but let me just fix that. Not equivalent. And I know it's not the same handwriting, but you'll get over it. Oh, we'll put the little boxes here for us too. Okay, so let's take a look at this. 
we've got our last two here. Um, the expression is this, two thirds times the quantity of three fourths x minus two, three over two. We get to woo, this is fun. I didn't know, realize we were gonna do all this wooing. Here we go, woo, woo, two thirds. Everybody gets a two thirds. Two thirds times three fourths x minus three halves. Whoa, 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 Mrs. DeSilva, you're doing crazy things. Minus two thirds times three halves. Oh, fancy. Okay, so let's see. We've got, we're going to, Remember, we're multiplying, so we can multiply the number without a variable times the one that has a variable. And remember our rules. When we multiply, look across. What is that? They cancel. And then the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. Well, that's 2 times 1. 2 times 1 over 1 times 4. Well, that's 2 over 4. That is going to equal 1 half. So this, of course, is what I'm thinking in my head because I know that what that means is I'm going to have one half X minus, cancel, cancel, these are all ones. So it's gonna be one half X minus one. Is that one of our choices? I can't remember. <gasps> yes, there it is. One half X minus one, here it is. There it goes. Okay, next. Oh, this is so complicated, Ms. Dezilla. Why, why, why do they make it so complicated? Oh, it's not. 2x plus 1. There's nothing going on here. I'm just going to rewrite that. 2x. Did I say minus 1? 2x plus 1. Now, I've got the minus. This is what I was all excited about because I get to woo and woo again with the minus signs. So, that's 2x plus 1 minus x plus Three, whoa. I wooed. I almost forgot I wooed. How do we forget we woo? So I brought that negative in here. This is a plus, so it's going to be minus three halves. Okay, so now I get to sort my X's in boxes, my non X's underlined. So I'm going to have 2X plus, uh uh, bring that. Operation 2x minus x in a box plus 1 minus 3 halves, underline. 2x minus x is x, right? If I've got two x's, wait, wait, where is it? The ninja one. There he is, ninja one. <gasps> he's there. No, he's not there. There. Not there. There. Not there. Ninja one, right? Okay, so 2x minus x leaves me with 1x or just plain old x because we don't usually write the 1 because that is icky. 1 minus 3 halves. I've got one whole thing minus 3 halves. One whole thing minus 3 halves. Can I do that? Well, if I think about my 3 halves as 1 and 1 half, I take away 1 and 1 half, well, 1 minus 1 is 0, I've got a minus 1 half. Wait a second, is that what's up there? <gasps> there it is. Dun, 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 dun. Great job, class. See you again real soon.